First of all, thank you very much for the wonderful presentation, Manish. I was sort of blown away with the graphics and you know, so much innovative ideas. Um, so as you know, I'm coming from a company called Bentley Systems. And I was wondering while it is looking at the presentation that uh, so many things can be done with our technology and your innovative ideas. Like uh, we, have, we have software like something called context capture, where you can actually fly through a drone or even take your smartphone and keep on taking pictures. And with those pictures, we can actually create a 3D reality model, a 3D mesh we can create just from, just from the pictures, from the iPhone pictures or the any Android pictures. And, and with those pictures, we can do, you can actually superimpose your proposed model with an existing terrain. And it's all engineering data. I mean, nothing over there, uh, which is just a picture. It's all engineering data. And with those data, uh, you can actually do the energy simulation on top of it. You can do like, uh, you're seeing a lot of pictures with the good graphics on the lighting part. So you can do weather simulation, energy simulation. You'll be able to see, okay, at 9 p.m., how the scenario will look like. If it's a high-rise building, if I go on the 16th floor, uh, how it will feel like from the 16th floor, from the 18th floor. So we have all those technologies. Uh, I wish I'd be presenting that topic today after your presentation rather than this topic. But uh, anyway, uh, the, my topic today is called optioneering through cloud computing. And um, uh, as I said, you know, uh, I think I got a good introduction. Uh, my name is Apurva Trivedi. I, I work from the Anaheim, California office, um, and I'm a director of regional product management. I do uh, development product management, but uh, in general, I'm a civil engineer uh, with a structural focus. Um, so I work with different, if we are, how many of you are actually civil engineers or structural engineers? The many of you. Anybody have heard of STAD? Yeah? Many of you. I was the code developer of STAD. So if you're using STAT, then probably it's good to know that many of you are using it. Uh, so that was something I worked on for many, many years uh, to develop a software like that. So let's go to the real topic. It's not working, by the way. All right, while well, we are we're figuring out the technology, how to make it work, the slide changer. Okay, good, thank you. So first of all, we're, to we're talking about optioneering through cloud. So how many of you know what cloud is? Or there are many misconceptions about cloud. So some people think cloud is more about storing data. Uh, may I know how many of you actually use cloud on daily basis? Anybody use cloud on daily basis? Only a few, right? Let me ask you, how many of you use email every day? Or do Facebook every day? Or Twitter, LinkedIn, any of those things? Probably all of you, right? So that means you're using cloud every day. So if you're using you know, Gmail, you know, Hotmail, Yahoo Mail, any of those emails, those are all from cloud, coming from cloud. Uh, so if you're, if you're doing you know, FTP, if you're doing you know, any of those, like a Dropbox, uh, Facebook, Twitter, those all are coming from cloud. So, so cloud is nothing to do with just storing data. Storing data is a part of it, of course, uh, but it is a lot more than that. So there are three, if you talk to the, uh, you know, the, the IT people, uh, who are more from the um, information technology, they will talk about three aspects to define cloud. First is the, uh, the processor. I mean, there are, there are, hard, there are processors which actually process too many things. Uh, so they're like a computing power. That's the first thing. Then of course, there's something called big data. So big data meaning that too much data coming into it. So you take those data and do something about it. But you have to write an app. So the cloud is taking all the data together and you have to write a specialized application to, to make sense of those data. So that is, that is the big data. And the last one is the communication. So the, the, they call it network connection. But if you put in the engineering term, it's more of a communication. That how you take that data, whatever stored in the cloud, and make use of it somewhere else. So now convert that to, the, to what we do on a daily basis. So the, uh, the processor becomes uh, computations. So some of you are using STAD models or designing um, you know, your, your street structures using, using STAD. So uh, there could be a method where you want to, like he was talking about the optimization. So optimization meaning that you want to try many alternatives. And with those alternatives, you want to come out come for an optimization. 
So, if you want to do that optimization you all always will try to wish that okay maybe you know if I can run, run 10 of those models with little bit more optimization little bit you know change my base spacing little bit. Maybe I want to change my truss structure maybe I do not want to use my X frame maybe I want to use a K bracing instead of X bracing. So, you want to try all many of those alternatives and come out with a solution. If you want to do that you, you want to have the power to run many of the models at the same time and not only run the model when the analysis is done you want to come out of it and make some sense out of it and that is the thing called analytics. So, so once you get all this model run you get the data back and now you want to know. So, I want to know ok I only care about the cost optimization. Some engines no 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 I am not cost is one factor of course, but I also want to make sure that my lateral displacement not too much on the highest level of the floors. So, that is one of the optimization you think of. So, those the analytics uh, you know you can do using cloud computing and then of course, the uh, the communication you want to take the same data which you are doing in your desktop in your office you want to go to the site and you want to access the same data with your you know iPad maybe or your surface or you know even using a bigger iPhone like you know the iPhone 6 plus with that, that kind of iPhone you should be able to visualize enough thing uh, which will max you know correlate with your desktop data and your site data. So, this is the this is the compute. So, if we take out the take this just the computation part. So, this is what cloud means. So, cloud means that you know you have a you have a uh, you are sitting somewhere with a with a laptop or a computer and you are connecting to a node and that node is connected with lot of other nodes it is called cluster of data. So, you you get something you connect to a cluster of data and then you add as many machines as possible as many processes as possible to compute as much as possible right. So, that is that is called that is the computation aspect of the of the cloud computing. Oh sorry I am pressing the So, so the, there is a new term being coined few years ago probably two years ago it is called optioneering. Anybody heard about optioneering that term before? No one any guess? Uh, it is very simple actually if I tell you you will be surprised what it means it is very very simple. Optioneering could be options plus engineering. So, you are doing an engineering with many many options many alternatives that is called optioneering it is simple enough right. So, that is the term been coined few years ago and you can see if you look at that the diagram over there. So, you will be able to see that you actually starting with a very large number of alternatives you are you are accommodating as many disciplines as possible as many segments of the data as possible you are you are having your architecture data you are having your uh, structural data you are having electrical data your mechanical data and you are gathering all those things going through large number of alternatives and coming to a process which is the most optimized. So, that is your that is what is meant by optionary and how cloud can help it. So, this is called scenario analysis and optimization. So, when you call about scenario analysis and optimization we are talking about a much wider we are talking about two aspects it should be broader it should be deeper. What broader means? Broader means like I was talking about a STAD model. So, like say you create a 256 STAD models you know by using some kind of parametric modeling tool and then you run all those models together right. So, that is broader I and mean, they are as you are covering as many broader aspects as possible and then you need to go deeper. What deeper means? Deeper means you are running as many models I understand, but you also want to be as as accurate as possible as complex as possible you know. So, you can get a higher fidelity design results that is extremely important. So, cloud can provide you it is it is amazingly scalable you know it is scalable meaning that you can take one thing and make it produce and multiply it as many times as possible that is scalable and that scale will only possible if you have the cloud computing power with you at your disposal. So, it is broader and it is deeper. So, these are these are some of the models. So, actually we are not we are not just talking about we are talking about a concept at the same time we did a lot of you know this kind of optimization with the real life examples. So, we are we are thinking of a uh, where I live there is a uh, is a you know baseball stadium and the baseball we are trying to optimize the design roof the roof of that baseball stadium. So, we tried many models. So, these are the models we created we uploaded uploaded on the cloud for the optioneering and then we got the results. So, this is another example of a offshore wind turbine uh, steel jacket and uh, we have a product called SAX that is uh, that is a like a de facto standard product if somebody is working on the offshore structures. And uh, so, doing this kind of structure with many alternatives it might take days to run 
and come up with a proper solution it actually literally takes days to compute with a, with a normal you know desktop or a laptop computer. But with cloud we can bring that days to hours because you are adding too many computing power to it you are adding nodes you know from from one computer to another computer so it's like a network you are creating which adds the power to the computation. A similar example you know like uh, the you can use excel to get a parametric modeling tool. Uh, you can have if you have excel at your disposal I think everybody has an excel you you write simple macros and from that you create models and then you run through it. Then we have you know something like for advanced users like you can use something called GC generative component. What generative component does you can actually formulate and script how you want to build a model. So once this you know formulation and scripting is done and it not only the sections it could be sections it could be material it could be even a topographic configurations. So all those things could be scripted and created. So this particular example which shows here that that platform was hit by a ship and it is software structure it was hit by a ship and using generative component we are trying to make sure that we are trying to model something which is as close as possible to the real as you know as built not as model structure and it was it was it could be it was done by using generative component. And then we come to the analytics. So yes we run you know 256 models as I, as I talked about but think out if we if you run so many models you will get a lot of data out of it right lot of analysis results. And what I when I say lot of data it's really really big data. So with those big data you also have to make sure somehow you make sense of those data. You have to have some kind of a uh, visualization and comparison tool uh, to, to get those data and okay so this is my best optimization I can get or these are the five alternatives among hundreds and then I can further comp, you know, optimize those. So you can see that uh, this is one of the graphs you know can be given which is uh, we can call it uh, structural KPI key performance indicators for structural or SPI like a structural performance indicator. So you can actually define your, your indicators you can say I am I'm, I'm, I'm only trying to optimize my lateral deflection you know from along my building height. So my height versus deflection that is the curve I want to know for my number of scenarios and whatever is the optimized what I think you know more acceptable then I am going to take that one. Or you can say okay I want to see I am not uh, more interested about the deflection other I want to um, interested on the stress values on the utilization ratios and that thing you can do you know that so different type of curves could be generated through those big data analytics and those and then from there you can make a decision that what are the models more applicable are more useful for you. You take those and then make more analytics out of it you actually make more detailed engineering analysis out of those alternatives. So this is the model I was talking about so we created four scenarios uh, for that stadium roof and you can see that you know there are little it's a little different even from the picture you can see a little different. Um, you know some are you know has more width some are a little more curvy. Uh, so from those and when you run it you can actually see that you know how those uh, uh, the stress and deflection, pro deflection profiles are varying. So there is a there is a simple uh, so even even visualize your visu visual if you want to compare because there are two models side by side and they are, they are showing the deflection pattern uh, and you can see model, two models are different. So one has the you know vertical column on the left side the other one does not have it. So uh, still you, you want to compare and see um, how, how it is behaving with those things. So similar thing I mean as I said you know cloud is amazingly scalable. I mean it does not have to remain only on the structures like you know we talk about but it could be it could be extended for anything and everything. So one other example we tried with the Keystone projects. So Keystone projects has like uh, you know like uh, thousands of supports for the pipe structures and uh, because it, it goes from one state to another state to another state it is such a big pipeline. And those pipes are so what we took a simple example of this pipe support optimization it is a simple model it has it has 40 supports defined there and and you can see those supports could be complex as well. So with that now we try to run the cloud analysis to see how we can optimize that. So first what are you going to do are going to define the, the support types you are first going to choose that what are the support types are going to we are going to need it and once those support types are chosen chosen we can define the boundary constraints. So you go and say okay these are the support points must have a support we cannot just ignore those support points. So we have those support points those are the constant and then once those are done so you can see these are highlighted and said so these are the, these are my constant I cannot ignore my support points there. 
once it is done, then um, we, we give the different parameters for the optimization because I want to optimize based on this or I want to optimize based on you know several combination of those parameters. Once those parameters were given, we run the analytics and at the end of the day we'll we'll get some results and uh, we'll see it soon. And that the so after all the analysis is done, we get the so we we started with 40 supports. We ended up with 17 supports. So, because of the cloud computing and with a lot of alternatives, we, we reduced the number of pipe support, you know, and then uh, it, it was nothing. All you needed to do just define the support position and the constant program was automatically able to uh, reduce those supports. Uh, so, that's a huge save. And if you think if you have thousands of supports, you know, how much saving can be done by, by cloud and the cost is just minimal, almost zero. So this is the, um, so when you talk about cloud, you also need to understand the cluster size of the cloud. So depending on how much cluster you are adding, your computation power will go up. So if you're having cluster size, say like, you know, two, your, your, your timing will be much higher. If you make it 20, your, your timing is so much less. So if you, if you want to save on time, that's, that's a good way of adding more cluster it will be a good idea. And then also there are more analytics we can add to it. And the one of the analytics is, that um, that you want to you want to compare the project you are working on today with with many past projects. So you want to you want to know how we are performing for this particular project as compared to the other projects. You want to know like, how much steel I'm using today. Uh, you know we have done similar projects before. And am I using uh, for per floor uh, how much steel is the utilization ratio? Am I am I using more? Am I using less? All those things could be compared by using the analytics. And finally, we talked about three aspects of the cloud. One is the computation, another one is the analytics, and the third one is the communication. The last one is the communication. So how would you communicate with that one? So there's a lot of cloud computing, alternatives has been chosen, analytics has been done, and now we want to communicate the data to someone else. Maybe we want to have some reviewer to review it. Maybe we want to have the site, site workers to you know, use that on their iPad and, 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 and check it, uh, and use that for the construction as well. So I'm going to show you a small video on that one. So this is something uh, called I model. So in the in the I model, um, you can have as much type, uh, as many types of data as possible. You can have the architecture model, structural model, piping model, mechanical model, electrical model. All those things can be built um, into into I model. And the I model is neutral, meaning that anybody and everybody would be able to use it. Um, and you can see that uh, you know there are there are different views can be saved. These are all structural models at the moment we are, we are looking at. You're looking at the beams. You're looking at the elements. You're getting the data. What type of data you are looking for? And also you can zoom in and you can you can see different layers. So this all the reinforcement can be can be shown over here. This is and these are like a free products. You don't you just download this product on your on your iPad and and use it. And it's all the reinforcement, all the detailing, all the bar pending schedule, uh, cutout, bill of material, everything could be inbuilt um, in this file itself. And, and not only that, you know, if you want to have some kind of issue resolution, um, you know, if you want to have include some, like, you know, you, you see, okay, this, this particular uh, something wrong I see here. So I want to add some comment to it, and then I want to send it to the reviewer to say, okay, I, I reviewed it, it doesn't look good to me, can you please check back? And also, you know, there are many other things you can, you can inbuilt in it, like you can have the videos. So I want to see the, uh, the uh, 3D, you know, isometric views of my, of my slab deflection uh, with my shear wall. Uh, so that videos could be inbuilt into the eye model, and you can see how it's deflecting. So with this, I, uh, I'll end up my presentation. I hope I did not take too long. Uh, so thank you very much for your...